now and, you know, it fa- found them. Well, I guess what, what I do is, uh, you know, I find the right solutions for our clients, no matter what it may be. And uh, the, the, the relationship with Solink kind of was born out of that is I've got a client that I've had for seven, eight years that we started doing surveillance for all of their businesses. And we would have this ongoing conversation of, I've got video, I've got point of sale, I've got all this information and I've got all this data, but there's no good way to be able to do anything with it. And, you know, I, I, I listened, we had, we had them on a hosted uh, platform for quite some time, but which made their lives easier to manage all their locations, but it still didn't give them the, you know, the actionable intelligence that they wanted or needed from their business. And uh, interestingly enough, had a conversation with, of all people, my father who uh, works for a company that's got close to 30 locations nationwide, and they had similar issues and had been using an enterprise video system. And he found this company that met their needs and exceeded their needs. And he introduced me to Solink. And from there, you know, the the, the relationship kind of formed and, you know, they, they just continue to add better and better features into the platform uh, to, to allow us to bring these solutions to our clients. Cool. Great. Thanks, Josh. Um, so, so Shauna, um, I'm going to just kind of kick it over to you, but I want to make sure that you're able to present. So at the bottom right hand corner of your screen, can you see a little button that says uh, present your screen? I can present, present now. Yeah. So if you want to, you know, just kind of take over and just uh, present your screen and then kind of give a rundown as to who you are, what you do and go from there. So I appreciate it. Yeah, perfect. Um, thanks, Blake. And thanks, Josh. Um, you know, I've been with Solink for two years now. And when I first got started with Solink, um, it was, you know, the same sort of wow that Josh is talking about. Um, What I've noticed is, you know, there's never really a one solution for everybody. And when I started with Solink, you know, that's exactly what we do. It's a smart hub for, you know, different data points, whether it be, as Josh mentioned, point of sale, or whether it be access controls, alarm panels, it can be anything along the lines of draft control for restaurants. Um, So it really is, you know, that one stop shop to bring all data points into your system and be able to monitor your location. We work with many different verticals, whether it be cannabis, uh, liquor stores, restaurants, retail, Um, and the nice thing is that we really do build this system. So it does work with many different verticals like health and beauty. Um, so when I got started, I was really excited. I come from a restaurant background, so I really understood the platform. So what we do essentially, as Josh had said, is we bring all your data points into one system. And I just want to confirm, can you guys see the dashboard right now? I see it. Perfect. Great. So this is our main landing page for Solink. And this allows our you know, restaurant operators, our business operators to essentially bring in that point of sale data. And you're going to see a few different things here. We have you know, transaction events. We have refunds. We also have a MIGO shift report. And this is just a demo environment right now. So um, you know, we might kind of hit some blitz. Um, Amigo is a labor control system for restaurants. So we integrate with that as well, looking at different revenues, manager discounts. You know, we believe that our restaurant owners and operators, you know, when they come in here, it is on a daily basis. It's not something that they just, you know, put into their, you know, their restaurants and use it as a security system. This is more than that. This is an operations tool that a lot of managers, shift shift supervisors use on a daily basis. We can get very granular when we're looking at revenue. We can compare locations, but we can also do things like tracking voids. You know, there's a lot of internal theft, external theft. 
at some of these businesses. And what we're here to do is help mitigate the risk um, and obviously increase profits. Because when we're able to find, you know, trends, it will be, we're able to identify a lot of things. So tracking voids, for instance, the nice thing is you still have your cameras. So we're bringing the two data points together, allowing you to find the truth. We really want to identify if there's some type of dip, if we're seeing a big spike in some things, we can actually click into these graphs. And that's, that's the nice part. We can get very granular. This is going to bring us into our events page where the magic happens. So this is where we pair those two data points together. This is a coffee shop in Canada where I'm located, and it's called Tim Hortons, if you guys aren't familiar. We work with Tim Hortons quite a bit. And the nice thing is when you have all these different video cards, it's very hard to go through. It's, it's you know, sometimes takes a really long time, as you guys I'm sure know, to find video footage that you're looking for. So we're seeing revenues, we're seeing, you know, variances, we're being able to see by day, week, month, and year. And the nice thing is, as we go through this, we can take a look at things like, what was my revenue last year at this time? This helps our restaurant operators also staff accordingly. If they're seeing a trend time over time, they're able to better staff their restaurants, you know, hence saving them labor as well. But this is where a lot of our, you know, operators and business owners spend their time is on our events page because we can do, you know, really granular th granular things like show me every time there was a void. So if they're using a point of sale, they're, you know, having to go back through, build reports and such where we can find voids very quickly in the Solink system by highlighting those voids. So you'll see right now, we have a variety, you know, we're on revenue. We can flip this to transactions as well and see we have 84 transactions with voids in them. Something that we might also want to add to this is tell me every time that there was a void with cash. This is one of the easiest ways for internal theft to happen at these locations. You know, a customer comes in, they place an order, the cashier then, you know, brings it in as a void and pockets the cash. So we're helping operators, you know, really get granular and identify things. When we put these two searches together, we can save this as a report. When we do this, it allows us to be able to do things like send me a push notification every time that these two things occur at the same time. It could be a matter of discounts over a certain amount, manager discounts, employee discounts. We see a lot of uniformed officer discounts in a lot of the restaurants that we work with. And that sometimes turns into a friend's family and everyone discount. So being able to help our restaurants and our businesses monitor things like discounts, voids, even time abuse, you know, when we're doing those labor integrations, this generally does save, you know, 10x the investment that they put into Solink and brings all the data points together. Now, you're taking a look at the data, you're seeing it, you found something and you just want to say, okay, so I'm seeing a lot of voids for Arthur. Just looking at this really quickly, let's add Arthur in, you know, bring this down even further. So any of the data that you see in the receipts can be highlighted and plugged into our search criteria to then hone in even further. So now we're taking a look at all of Arthur's transactions. If I see a video that I want to jump further into, we have synced these two together, allowing you to jump right into your video footage no longer having to fast forward and rewind to find that video clip. We do have a text overlay, but the nice thing is we can actually get rid of our text overlay because the receipt is along the side. We have, you know, same capabilities you would have on a normal NVR, DVR. You know, we can skip, we can zoom, we can, you know, speed up. Excuse the internet connection. I am at home as everybody else is in the world. Um, but the nice thing is, when we get to a situation like this, we're also seeing things like this yellow dot represents this transaction. We can flip to the next transaction and get the video for that. The length of the transaction is always there as well. And then we can also bring in other cameras. So if I wanted to add another camera to this view to see what's going on, and I will exit this one to see if we can get this fabulous demo system going here. Give me one sec, guys. I will refresh just in case it is internet. And it is internet. 
bear with me. Now, Josh, um, you know, when you implement this into the locations that you're working with, what is the typical trend that you would see? Where do you feel that they spend, you know, a lot of their times, I, I talk to many customers on a daily basis, but, you know, where do you see the majority of their time spent, would you say? Um, it it does tend to, you know, vary from client to client. Um, again, we've got still some clients where I, I get the biggest thing is being able to bring together a bunch of locations into that single interface. So maybe to to step back from that for for a quick second is you know traditionally what we've seen in a lot of the places that we're walking into. From my side of things, they might have three locations, they might have 30 locations or 100 locations, and mm -hmm. they end up having one DVR at this location, an NVR at the next location. They're all different brands of things. They have an incident. So their, their typical time um, is, is wasted driving in between locations going, trying to log into something and then realizing that they can't get that information. So, so that's like first and foremost, where we see our clients first delve into your platform is, oh my gosh, I've got a single pane of glass that I can see all of my locations. I can see all of my front counters at the click of a button. I can see all of my kitchens at the click of a button or all of my manager's offices at the click of a button. And once they see that, then then we're able to look at, you know, are there other places that that I want to say there are there other things that I want to be able to do? And then we get into the transactional information. And as soon as they start getting into the transactional information and getting those reports built, that's when the system turns from a cost center to a profit center to them. Um, we, we've got clients where, where I've gone in after like less than a week of having the system up and they're already tagging information up there and showing employee theft at this location, employee theft at that location. So they're, they're, they're finding these things. They can also, that, that's the other thing is being able to easily find that footage mm -hmm. and then get it in the right hands, whether that's law enforcement, whether that's other management, whether that's ownership and or or even to praise an employee on on a job well done. Yeah, and I think that's one of the most important things to really highlight is we don't just want to catch the bad, we want to praise the good. Um, you know, Solink is used as a training, you know, tool as well, and you know, being able to identify and find video very fast is what you had just mentioned. You know, with our motion search to be able to actually draw over an area. Very simple and identify motion then that pops up in that area. Being able to do things like this over fridge freezers or over office doors, you know, you can set up thresholds that say, alert me if this office was open after 10 p.m. because there's no one supposed to be in there at that time. Once we do, you know, quickly jump to those blue marks and it is done in a threshold. So the higher the bar, um, the more motion obviously involved in that area. Once we do pinpoint um, a motion in that area, and it is this door being open, we've now found that clip. And rather than using thumb drives as typical DVR and MVRs use, just as you mentioned, Josh, it's important to get these videos over to police as fast as possible. We could quickly can add in other cameras at this location and then send it the amount of time that you want to include with a title, which is then searchable in the same events field that we're looking at voids and discounts, and then email it. So some of our operators in really high risk area actually give a user code to the police in their area. This is because they can quickly go in, find that clip that they're looking for. It's generally exterior videos that they're looking for. But very quickly, we can send over an email. What happens after we send this is they receive a video that was shared and they have full user, you know, user ability to be able to just jump in here, watch this video and use it just like they would if they were in your system. But we're not, we're not giving access to our customer's system. They're only getting those two minutes that you saved and shared. 
So I think that's, that is really important to note, Josh. I mean, a lot of our users are using this, you know, not just for security, but operations, but it is really important to be able to get these videos and our, the 360, we've, pretty much use the gaming technology to be able to make this more of a, you know, virtual reality, like you're sticking your head through the ceiling, um, being able to have a full view of their locations. This is crucial in cannabis locations where we have to make sure that guidelines and compliance is being met. So if we have no blind spots um, and we're able to watch exactly what's going on in those locations, this is hands down vital for operators, especially, like I said, liquor and cannabis, where there's compliance, regulations. Uh, this is definitely where something like this comes into place. But being able to save and share that video, um, you know, so quickly lets those managers then get back to running that restaurant. The other really nice thing about it is that because you can see the motion that's put here, we've now re just released our alarms. So we can do integrations with alarm.com, allowing you to be able to get notifications when an alarm is triggered. So we just released our new alarms last week, allowing you to be able to go into your system and set up alarms around certain hours, meaning that if you have back doors or front doors that aren't supposed to be open, let's say between 12 and 6, that's what this location is right now, we can send you an email alert. I'll show you what that looks like allowing you to be able to see, you know what, this is an alarm that just came through. So it's not going to make a very loud sound like your alarm system does, but it does allow you to be able to see when that threshold was broken, be able to view the event, which then brings you right back into the Solink system. So that really saves you a lot of time, not having to, you know, rewind, fast forward, look for that video, but really bringing you and matching you to that event when it happens. Now, that is a lot of the video component of Solink. I mean, we have tons of features. We do things like people counting in lines and in line queues. Um, one of the things that we are noticing, especially with COVID going on right now, is, you know, a lot of our, you know, quick service and such don't have people in the location. But when we are using, you know, time periods where there was customers and it was a readily available time, Let's go back in time so we can see that. I can quickly identify how many cars were in line or how many people were in line. So I can do people counting. Give me one second, guys. People. Um, and I can actually pick whether it was greater than, less than. So I can identify if a new cash register needs to be open. So there is no results for over three people on March 9th at this location. So let's try a different one. We can do car counting. Actually, you know what, quicker. We'll just show you the, how the video works around this. So if I go through my drive through and Josh was quickly pointing out, we can group your videos together. So if you have multiple locations, like this restaurant owner does, we can group all the drive throughs together, all the you know back offices together, all the kitchens together to be able to jump into your video and do a very quick audit. You can look over each of your camera groups and see what's going on. And you're able to identify things very quickly this way rather than having to go through every single location and see what's going on. The other thing that we've been working on and is live in some of the locations that we work with is integration with drives through headsets. So be, to be able to hear the transaction that's occurring, um, we're able to identify if the order is accurate, and this allows the manager to be able to train their staff if things are, you know, we've heard things like we're at a burgers at some of the main restaurants that mostly sell burgers. Maybe they didn't just want to go to the back and pull burgers at that time. So we're able to identify these and, you know, let the managers know that this is going on. Josh, is there anything else that you really you know, want us to highlight, you know, that you feel is, you know, really imperative? I think being able to set up motion zones and, you know, being able to identify, tell me when there's motion in these areas. This is all stuff that's done on the front end, whether we're looking at, you know, vehicle counting or people counting. We are always, you know, adding new features and our product team is constantly um, thinking of new things that we can do. We have a lot of stuff going on right now 
Um, we've just pushed out the new alarm thing simply because you know, there's a lot of people that have locations closed right now that need to have those alerts. Um, heat mapping is set up to identify, you know, where's the most motion in your locations at which time. And then, as I mentioned earlier, just being able to add in other cameras, essentially like you would, you know, a live uh, monitor so that they can monitor different locations um, is pretty crucial as well. So we've actually got a question that uh, that came in uh, from from Zach, and I'm going to read it to you. And I I know the answer is these, but I want to get get you to answer these. Is so his okay. first question is is does SoLink work with any IP camera or just SoLink cameras? If SoLink makes cameras, that's a great question. Um, so we are about 98% camera agnostic. So we work with the majority of cameras that are on the market. Um, think of it this way. We don't work with the really high end ones that have proprietary, um, you know, software, uh, Vercada and such. And we also don't work with the very low end cameras, something like a Nest system, simply because of the security, um, that comes with that. But, you know, we do work with a lot of IP cameras and uh, we challenge our um, partners to bring us new cameras and we'd love to test them if we don't already work with them. But we do work with quite a few different um, IP cameras. We also work with analog cameras. I'll note that as well. All we need to do is add an encoder to transfer that over to an IP signal. So we can work with locations, existing cameras. We provide our customers cameras if they need them, but if we have partners, you know, like Josh, um, we don't do that aspect. We let Josh, you know, run that end of it, and we simply, you know, provide them the software that's needed. And and just to kind of add on to that for for you, Zach, here is we've only run into a couple of instances, and they've tended to be like super low end, like they got, they got the deal of the week at Costco <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. and, 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 and to their credit, we've, we've in some cases had their engineers where they will try their best to, to make them work. But what's really nice, what we've run into is we, we do site surveys on anything where clients want to do uh, utilize existing cameras at least to get them up and going. And we'll provide back to the operations team at SoLink the actual um, part number, or excuse me, manufacturer's part number of the NVR, DVR that's in place. And based on that, their operations team generally can come back and say, yep, no problem, or nope, that's not going to work. Um, and again, you know, analog and even all the different flavors of analog HD that are out there. Again, we've got a client where we're rolling out 25 locations for them currently, and 99% of their locations have some form of analog or analog HD in place. And out of 25 locations, we've only met with one location where, again, it was just the bargain basement stuff that they just said is not reliable, can't work with it. But every other location, we literally walk in with their encoder, we walk in with their device, and our technician is in and out the door in two hours. And these are locations that have anywhere from eight to 20 cameras per location. And, and, and it's, it's a very, uh, very quick uh, up time just to get them up and going. And then, so two more questions on under Zach here is, is, is this all cloud or is there any on-premise equipment required and or optional, which we kind of touched on, but I'll let you go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we do have a device, a hardware device that sits on site. It's a QNAP um, that records your, you know, retention on site. And our standard is 30 days. We can extend this and we've done it for many different clients. You know, cannabis obviously has compliance that, you know, some need 60 days, some need 90, some want six months just for the safety of it. So that device on site can be customized based on their current retention. The nice thing is, though, that it does go into the cloud as well. We can do video recording, let's say, in an office and send it directly to the cloud. And some people request this because if something happens to the QNAP, they want the video footage of what happened to the QNAP before, you know, whatever happened, happened. So 
When you save and share a clip also, as we did earlier, that gets sent directly to the cloud and gets saved in our clip section. These are now clips of interest to us. And what happens is once they're in here, they're in here for the entire time that the client is with us. When they decide to leave us, if they ever do, our churn rate is very, very low. Um, if they're closing down or whatever, this is their data. And we actually, you know, compile it all together and send it back to them. So they do get to leave with their clips and their data as well. But this part of it is stored in the cloud. And then the on-site retention is actually um, via the QNAP that Josh was mentioning, just bringing that device in and installing it. And one one final question from Zach, mm -hmm. and then we've got another question coming in here. No problem. Um, is what's the licensing structure? And I think he's probably meaning, is there a per camera fee, something like that? Yeah. Yeah. So the nice thing is that Solink doesn't have any types of, um, you know, licensing around users or anything like that. Um, you're using the existing cameras, so whatever you put in is great, but we don't have any extra costs. So our monthly subscription covers, you know, the service that we're providing you, which also covers the cost of the QNAP. It's all rolled into one. And we have a on-site, like, setup fee um, for the customers to get our techs or, you know, a partner like Josh into these locations to get it set up. But there's no per-user, per-camera licensing. It's all one component of the software as a service. Okay, and we got a question from Chris. Chris mm -hmm. is saying, can you have it save 30 days 24-7 recording on site and 120 days motion slash event on the cloud automatically? Well, I mean, there's different ways to configure it. So, I mean, those specific numbers, um, you know, I think it would just depend on what you're looking for. We do both cloud um, storage and on site. So because the system is so flexible, these are things that we could work with the customer to decide what they're looking for and build that around what they need. Okay. Um, the, the other thing that kind of popped in, oh, hold on. Uh, it says basically the functionality he would need would be to auto transfer slash purge. So if purge I, for what so chris i don't know if you could get a little more specific on that or potentially that might be a question that could be handled offline with you seeing if he yeah i mean i was gonna say we can always um you can know you speak yes oh, yeah. there's hey. there's chris yeah so the question i hey, have chris. is um hey you guys so I've got a, a customer that uh, we've got a consult with next week, actually, um, that they want, you know, like 30 days of full recording on site, but then they just, they need to hold the events in case there was an issue or motion for a longer period, but they prefer it cloud so that they can just, uh, you know, it can just fall off automatically. We can do it with like the GeoVision or, or, or Digital Watchdog or mm -hmm. some of our other ones, but we have to script it. And then usually be either a manual batch or we'd have to build a batch file and a, a script to basically go in and, and purge, you know, kill off that data on site and then pull out all the events and push those to the cloud for that 120 day retention. Um, right. And so, you know, I'm just wondering whether or not you guys have any some, something similar in there where you can pretty much be like, hey, you know, obviously we need 24 seven for a certain period for law enforcement, whatever. But then after that period, all we care about was whether or not there was motion there but they don't want that stored on site. And because they're a large multi-location company across the US, they'd like to you know, be able to pull the data and pull the analytics and whatever, you know, more off of a cloud-based setup. Okay, so you hit something really important. The data that you're seeing here um, and the analytics, it remains in the system. Um, okay. So that won't expire like the video clips would or the retention would. Um, if you're looking for, you know, tell me every time this back door, this zone, um, was lit up and, you know, you'll see the notifications as they're coming in. I am not a hundred percent sure. So I don't want to give any promises, but you know, these are clips of interest. So there's probably a way that we could do it. I would love to kind of explore this more with you. If you want to set up some time, we can talk to the product team 
and see if this is something that we could, you know, do for that specific client or even bring into the product roadmap. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. I appreciate it, guys. No problem. Sure. And, and, and that, that's just another thing in, uh, to, to point out, and I'll uh, bring up the next question here in a second, is that, you know, ge generally from, from a standpoint, not to put too many words in, in Shauna's mouth, is that, that one, of the, one of the great things that we've seen being a partner with them is I don't think I've heard the word no out of them yet. <laughs> Is, is they, they generally, what they want to do is if it's a new client opportunity and they see the value in, in it, in something that could be utilized, um, you know, through, sorry, sorry about the kids in the background, but, uh, <laughs> so, um, but, but to be able to utilize across their, their client platform you know, it's something that they've that they've taken on with smiles and said, hey, it, it may take us a little while. We see the value of this. We're going to figure this out and we're going to work with you guys. Just give us some time. And that's that that's generally what we have seen as being a partner with them. Um, yeah, I think just like I mean, as you know, and I think it's important for everybody to know, we have feedback right in our platform for a reason. Um, you know, our product is built on customer feedback and partner feedback because, you know, we have product roadmaps of things that we would love to put into Solink. And the nice thing is when we roll out these updates or these new features, we push them directly to that on-site QNAP. So you never have to do updates or, you know, maintenance or, um, you know, things like that, where if we have our customers coming in and saying, I want to see this, or I want to be able to draw on the screen and it show me when was the last time somebody went in that area. That motion search that we do today was actually, you know, asked um, to us by a customer. So we find it very crucial to go hand in hand with our partners, with our customers, and really find out what the need is and then build around that if we possibly can. And that's where alarms came in. Um, those alarm features weren't even you know, they were on the roadmap, but they were a little bit out. And when we went into COVID quarantine, essentially, um, our product team, you know, really buckled down night and day and brought that out because we knew our customers more than ever needed that now. So, yeah, exactly, Josh. We want to do everything we possibly can to assist. Um, and if there's a use case for it and we think it's going to be beneficial, then, yeah, we definitely want to hear it, hear it and work with you guys to develop it. Okay, we've got another question from Mason. And Mason asks, does this replace the current VMS or does it work alongside the current VMS? So it, it really depends. I mean, at the end of the day, to be able to do what you're seeing here, we want to be the QNAP. We want to be the NVR, the DVR. Um, I've seen current DVRs or NVRs stay on site to either do backup retention or, you know, side by side retention. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, this, this is your system. You're, you're going to have your cameras put in and, you know, you're going to be able to do a lot more. We can actually monitor. We do health checks on all the, on all the systems. So we can tell you all the cameras are offline. If all of a sudden, you know, there's a blip in the internet or power and the cameras go down, um, our team is actually monitoring this and they get notifications if all the cameras go offline, um, or if the QNAP goes offline. And when this happens, we reach out to the customers directly and give them a heads up that something went down. So our system is meant to be the video management system because we have customer support in here that is 24 hours, 365, always there and ready. And to respond, if something should go down, we generally catch it before our customers do. Thank you. Um, let's see. It looks like... Um, Okay, so Mason just asked another question. He says, do I have to use the QNAP or can I use a server on site? And I think it might be helpful to kind of explain again more, more the platform of when, when someone decides they want to bring you all on to, to use as your service, how, how that works and, and explain the, the hardware part of it. Yeah, um, definitely. So. 
how we generally work when we are working with these franchisees or, you know, cannabis, cannabis locations, we have that QNAP that works as the, you know, remote storage device. It gets put on site. Um, it is a monthly subscription. So they per, pay per month um, per camera. And then that gives them 30 days of SD, 30 days of HD news to you, Josh. We're just switching that over. Um, and, you know, that's generally how it works. It, it's a monthly service fee. Now, I am, you know, talking from my small medium, um, you know, I am a national accounts director for the small medium businesses. We do have an enterprise team um, that works with a lot of large, large retail locations and chains. And I don't know if they've been presented. Uh, this sounds more of a enterprise tier. Um, once again, definitely something I'm willing to jump on a phone call with you guys with um, this week or next week, whenever you have some time to answer. Um, but for the majority of our customers, it is just using the QNAP um, with possibly an MVR or DVR that they already had as a backup. And, and just to kind of piggyback on that, what, what I've seen in some of the locations that we've rolled out is that in most cases, their standard QNAP that they're providing uh, based on the amount of cameras gives the amount of storage the client is looking for. And in the rare occasion where the client says, you know, I want that 60 days, 90, 120, whatever that happens to be, or based on the camera count in the megapixel, uh, yep. you know, as far as right. the, the range of HD is we've mm -hmm. gotten rack mount uh, QNAPs loaded up with more storage from them too. And the, the, the you know, and, and generally speaking, you know, unless this has changed in the past few weeks is that <laughs> these things tend to be all wrapped into the service. So the, the client has a very, if they're utilizing existing cameras on site, there's a very low out of pocket uh, for, for them to get onboarded. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we're, is there any other questions, Josh? I was just thinking I'd jump into our report here, but it, go ahead and ask any questions if you have them as I'm loading this up. At, at the moment, it doesn't look like we've got any okay. more. It, well, it looks like we've, we may, we've got one other person typing at the moment, so we'll see if, if he's no got problem. a question coming in. Maybe just, just to show one other kind of cool feature, if you could dive into the, one of the 360 cameras for a moment, because that's, mm -hmm. that seems to be something that any client that we show that the built-in 360 D-Warp, not only from a live, but a, from, from a forensic standpoint is, mm -hmm. you know, it is, is phenomenal where, and, and this is not, you know, specific to a particular manufacturers they work with lots of different manufacturers where sometimes you have to use a specific VMS based on the 360 camera. That's just not the case with them. Yeah. I, you know, these 360s, every time I've shown it, they end up getting implemented into the locations that, well, I think all the locations I work with you on um, have 360s in there. They are, you know, one of the biggest things that people ask for, because like I said, there's no blind spots. They can see everything that's going on. Um, so very, very cool. Um, but also one of the main, you know, reasons that, you know, people have come to us or switched to us is the, be a, the ability to be able to actually take a look, view everything, and then have that data and everything put in, you know, one house essentially so they can search through it a lot easier. Um, the other thing that I did want to touch on is our daily digest because it's important to note that, you know, as we're building out those reports that you saw on the main dashboard, it's great when they come in here and they can take a look at it. But the one thing that we've always, you know, been really specific about is making sure that they're using their video system proactively. It's no longer a, oh, something happened. I need to go check my video. We want to be able to use this proactively. So what we do is based on the reports that they find of importance and that we've built out or they've built out, um, we send them a daily digest and a weekly digest highlighting their revenue from the day prior discount, you know, any motion and where the motion was, any, you know, really anything that we can build out. And then 
refunds, flag slowest transactions. So any type of report they build out will be customized in this report. They'll see the video clip um, picture, what happened in the receipt, but the view button brings them right into their Solink system so that they can see what happened during this time as well. Um, just one, one other question that actually mm -hmm. popped in from Blake was, is there a preferred camera manufacturer? Not sure if that was was mentioned. No, um, there's no real preferred vendor. Um, like I said, we work with the majority of the IP cameras on um, on the on the market right now. The, we do typically, if we're selling cameras to customers, let's say, you know, a customer just comes inbound or, you know, our, our sales team ourselves have went and hunted that client and, you know, showed them the system. We are typically selling them Hike Vision cameras um, or Hanwha. And these are the two just because of the um, contracts that we have with those, you know, those two suppliers. But we also work with many other camera suppliers. Um, but those are typically the cameras that we supply. Um, you know, Josh, I don't know what cameras you specifically. I, I mean, I think the majority of the ones that I've done with you have been those, but there's there's nothing really that we're pushing. You're you're allowed to choose whatever you want as long as it's compatible with the system itself. Correct. Yeah, we've used both Hike and and Hanwha with with y'all. Yeah. Um, well, Shauna, th this has been awesome. We really appreciate you taking the time, especially on on a Sunday. I know I know homeschool starts <laughs> up in about uh, five minutes ago or so, or oh, dinner crazy. or something. And it sounds like <laughs> dinner is trying to start at my house anytime now too. So yeah. thank yeah. you so so much for your time and uh, getting getting to walk us uh, through this. Blake, do you have Anything else you'd like to? Yeah, just just real quick. Yeah, thanks again, uh, Shauna. But uh, how can we uh, get in touch with you? What's the best next step for somebody that would want to take the next step with you guys? Yeah. Um, no, I appreciate that. And, you know, thank you guys for asking me to come on. Um, the best way to reach me is via email. Um, it is on the calendar invite. Um, so you can definitely find it there. Um, probably the best way. And then if we have further questions, like we were mentioning earlier, product questions, or if you just have a client that you, you know, you want to ask questions for, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm generally very quick. And then we can even jump on a separate demo because we do have a back end system. Um, as you know, Josh is aware that allows, you know, people that are installing cameras or you know maintaining cameras for clients to be able to go in, take a look at things and make sure everything's set up as well. So there is more to this. So definitely feel free to shoot me over an email if you have any questions or if you'd like to jump further in or even find out a better partner um, program as well. Sure, that's great. Thank you very much. Perfect. All right, so yeah, so everybody, um, yeah, Thank you for joining the call. Uh, we're going to wrap up kind of early today because there's not enough time to do check-ins and everything. But yeah, just again, thank you so much, Shauna and Josh, for, for organizing this. And uh, once again, if you have any questions, reach out to her or Josh or myself. And uh, always there's the Slack channel with a lot going on in there if you want to put any questions in there. But um, yeah, we're going to wrap up uh, kind of early. So I appreciate everybody's time on this Sunday. So have a great rest of the day. Thanks, Blake. Thanks, Josh. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all very much. Have a good night. All right. Bye.